Final Fantasy, uh, a show, a franchise that has basically been around uh, for generations at this point. A, a, essentially, a go for broke uh, project created by the developer to say whether uh, if this game is a success, he will stay in the industry. If it fails, well, he'll he'll back out of the games industry completely. Uh, we're now in 2020, expecting the remake of Final Fantasy VII to come out, out with numerous titles, spin-offs, and franchises, everything from orchestras uh, showcasing the, uh, some of the most brilliant music in JRPGs ever, to some of the worst anime adaptations ever. Uh, the Crystals is based 200 years off of Final Fantasy V. Uh, many people have not actually played Final Fantasy V, but it was probably, at the time, one of the most popular games to ever come out. Uh, but it never reached uh, the United States or the, the Western world until recent years when the remakes and ports came about. Uh, set on the planet are Liliana and Prez are two teenagers that are going around trying to collect the crystals and save the, the world after the, the Warriors of Light, essentially the original Warriors in the, the franchise, uh, save the world. These are only myths now. Trying to prevent uh, basically the bad group, the baddies, no matter what way you wanted to call them, uh, run by uh, Rod Devil. Uh, using a lot of sort of the tropes that we kind of mistake nowadays, we kind of forget that a lot of these tropes were created in the 80s and 90s. And the people that sort of created those tropes went on to sort of influence a lot of the industry. Uh, Rintaro, uh, who, who worked on the likes of Kimba the White Lion, uh, and Astro Boy, as well as character designers that went on to do, uh, everything from every sort of franchise ever you can look at even some of the smallest character designers that have been involved in this franchise uh involved in this oav and take a look and see the sort of the influence that they've built in they've been in everything up to the days they've been involved in overlord uh ride back uh and various different things at this point. Uh, one of the things I will say uh, that works for it on this thing is sort of the jokes. Because they're not trying to go for five jokes every couple of seconds type of thing, when the jokes actually do happen, it works. Uh, especially with the voice cast at the time. So a lot of the people that are used... Uh, in the in the dub of this uh were essentially there were starting voice actors at the time uh some of the people that were involved the people that worked on tenchi moyo so uh there is a scantily clad pirate in it by the the name of rouge who is voiced by washu from tenchi moyo so if you enjoy sort of throwbacks to different franchises and seeing where they sort of got off you know, where they start off in the beginning. Uh, 
the comedic timing is really well on this. Now, some of the downfalls in this is the exposition in this. Every single, because their OAV is based off of two tapes, they do sort of a Star Wars S thing that maybe lasts maybe about a minute and 30 seconds or roundabout that. And it's on every single one. Now, at the time that it was released, it was released on two VHSs. And it's broken off after four, uh, basically four, uh, four volumes, two, uh, two on each VHS. Uh, would I recommend this to people? If you're a fan of, you know, uh, JRPGs, Final Fantasy, or animation in general, I think you should take a watch of this. It's probably one of the few shows that I think that people are kind of forgetting the influence that some of the old older 80s and 90s anime have ever come about. So, uh, something that was at the time predicted to be one of the worst things ever, I don't know, due to, I don't know, fan service or whatever it is, it's not that bad. Looking back on it now, yeah, it's probably a terrible sequel to the franchise because it's set 200 years after the thing, with only small little reference, references and bits and pieces. But as a bigger part of the Final Fantasy franchise, as a media uh, release, looking back on it now, it's probably one of the better ones. Uh, nowadays, either everything is a joke a mile a minute, or completely too serious and too dark, and too in gross in its own lore. And it's harder for people to actually get into a franchise, especially starting off. But someone, you know, I was able to watch this, and may not, well, I may not be able to know all the references, but I was able to appreciate the references that I didn't know from playing Final Fantasy VII and the other franchises. Um, so some of the jokes in it are, yeah, they're, they're a bit crude and goofy, but, you know, they're kind of the tropes that started off this whole thing, the franchise. A lot of things you can look, even in Tenjin Muyo, you can see a lot of references from that have been used in JRPGs and uh, games and anime, and even Dragon Ball Super now took a, there's a lot of references from stuff that have been involved in this. And a lot of animators that involved in the process and sound engineers uh, went on to work, you know, everything from Dragon Ball Super to pretty much anything. So would I recommend this uh, OAV for people? Definitely. Uh, where would you be able to check this out? Well, it's kind of hard to, but you'd be able to actually watch the, the full dub of it if you don't mind a little bit of compression uh, that's available on YouTube. So definitely check it out if you have a chance. All right, sayonara. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our podcast. Uh, links in the description and sign up for the channel. All right, see ya.